Well, hello, everyone. What are some examples of two things that go together well? I'll start, peanut butter and jelly. Could I get a little audience participation here? Examples of two things that go together well? Cookies and milk? Salt and chocolate? One more, what's one more example? Bacon and eggs, excellent. These are all excellent examples. How about Kubernetes and security? My name is Ala Dewberry. I know you're all so surprised. <laughs> My <laughs> yes. <laughs> My name is Ala Dewberry. I have the pleasure of uh, talking about SIG Security, what we've been up to with my colleagues Pushkar, Savitha, and Ray today. So a little bit about what we do in SIG Security as a whole. So SIG Security is a horizontal, non-coding SIG that drives security initiatives for the entire Kubernetes project. So some examples are checking in with um, other parts of the project, the other SIGs, making sure that the core components of Kubernetes are secure, doing some vulnerability management in addition to the four sub-projects that you'll be hearing about today. So what really makes us stand out as a sort of security organization is really our approach in that it is very open and community driven. Uh, I know I've definitely experienced at some of the organizations I've worked at the security organization being uh, sort of a policy enforcer and um, you know being a little bit regimented. And with our open community-based approach, what really comes across is that what gets done and what we focus on is really based on who comes to the meetings, what are they excited about, what interests them, and what do they think is important about driving security forward in the project. And that really speaks to our four focus points, which are four sub-projects, which are Self-assessments, which is the sub-project that I lead, docs, which is Savitha, tools, which is Pushkar, and uh, let's see, third-party audit, which we'll be talking about today, which is driven by Ray. Now, if you want to come and join the good trouble that we make, hop into our Slack channel, uh, SIG Security. Also, you can join our Google group, which will add you to all of the meetings, including the biweekly SIG Security meeting and all of the sub-project meetings as well. So first, a little bit about self-assessments, the sub-project that I lead. Uh, there should be a picture here. Oop. There we go. So this is the lightweight threat modeling sub-project in Kubernetes. So our output is uh, lightweight threat models. Totally shocking, I know. But the outcome that we're really trying to drive through those outputs is not only making Kubernetes itself more secure from you know, a, a coding perspective, but also to build the security community and the security muscle um, in the Kubernetes project. So we do that by inviting, you know, really as many people who are interested as possible in these lightweight threat modeling exercises so that by the end of the exercise, we've now left several people armed with the knowledge of how to conduct a lightweight threat model, which is a pretty awesome thing. So what have we been up to? Well, currently we are focusing on the uh, threat model for the vSphere CSI driver. I do happen to work at VMware, that's a coincidence. So uh, today uh, we have completed all of our data flow diagramming. So we've got all of our sequence diagrams and component diagrams in order. And now we're actually poised to begin the stride model or the threat modeling part of the process. So um, that is where we are at today. Now, um, just a really quick high-level overview of the process that we use. So really, it's about you know, starting with the people. Once we have figured out a piece of the, the project that we want to threat model, getting the team together. So like I said, uh, this doesn't mean that it's just experts who are involved. We want to take beginners uh, with us on the journey so that they can then leave the exercise with the knowledge um, and go forth and threat model other parts of Kubernetes. Then it's about mapping the attack surface, so putting in the time to draw the component and the data sequence diagram so that we can see how everything works. Then we conduct the threat model. As we do that, we of course write up our findings um, in a pull request. Uh, that pull request goes through a review process to make sure we didn't miss anything. And then uh, we merge it, and then it's done. But wait, it's not, because a threat model is a living artifact that should be continuously reviewed um, as that uh, piece of the project evolves. So how to get involved? You can hop into uh, either one or both of the Slack channels, either for the self-assessment subproject itself or for the vSphere CSI driver. You are also welcome to shoot me a DM in Slack as well. And uh, you can also, uh, this is actually a call for help. If you have any threat modeling experience and you want to help with the vSphere CSI driver threat model, 
we would love for you to participate. So please jump into one of the Slack channels, shoot me a DM, we would love to have you. And uh, yeah, we are always looking for targets for our next threat model. Um, I love a good roadmap, I am a product manager. So if you have ideas uh, for other parts of the project that could use this, uh, we would love to hear from you. And now I am gonna hand it to Pushkar to talk about tooling. All right, can everyone hear me? Cool. So thank you, Ala. Uh, we are a sub-project called Tooling, where we make Kubernetes more secure by writing code. Uh, there are two tracks that we currently work on. One is scanning for vulnerabilities in Kubernetes. So today we, we have been scanning Kubernetes, Kubernetes for Go model vulnerabilities and all the release images for almost two plus years. The scan jobs run every six hours, and we continue to triage anything that seems important to fix with the rest of the community. We can't do anything alone like any security people can. So we work a lot with a uh, lot of other six, and they are the co-maintainers for all the code that we have written. So for vulnerability scanning, we have SIG architecture, we have SIG release, mm -hmm. We have SRC, which is a security response committee, which we work really closely with. And then we have the second track, which is something more visible for end users, which is the auto-refreshing official CVE feed. So uh, anyone has heard of that, used it as a CVE feed in Kubernetes official documents? All right, cool. So now you know uh, what it is. Uh, it is uh, essentially a web page with a JSON feed and an RSS feed for all the CVEs that Kubernetes SRC will publish. And typically, they are all the fixed CVEs. You can essentially use a Slack bot to subscribe to that feed. And anytime a new CV comes up, you, you'll get a message for it. It was uh, an alpha feature. Uh, back in 125, and now it became a beta feature from 127. Currently, there is a lot of uh, discussions going on in the background. We have gotten a lot of feedback in terms of how we can improve it. Uh, we will soon be publishing a lot more concrete information about what we want to do, and at that time, you all can come and help all of us in uh, SIG Security Tooling Channel. Uh, we are always looking for people who can help us out. Uh, the last thing I would say is we also do learning sessions every other uh, meeting, uh, and we meet uh, every other week. Uh, and you, anyone of us who is somewhat working on anything related to Kubernetes security want to present something that they've been working on, whether it's a project which is open source and does something with Kubernetes security or something else, you're free to join us. There is a GitHub issue that you can use to add yourself uh, for one of the upcoming meetings. Uh, with that, I'll pass it on to Savita. Thank you, Pushkar. My name is Savita Raghunathan, and I am the lead for the SIG Security Documentation Project. And in this project, what we do is, uh, oh, see, sorry about that. Uh, in this project, what we do is we create security awareness through documentation. What that means is that we are constantly updating all the concepts related to security, creating new tutorials, updating all the examples so that the uh, folks who are consuming Kubernetes can um, consume it securely. And uh, we do that along with uh, embodying the principles of SIG security. If, by that I mean that we like to share and learn, and we also are a very welcoming SIG. Um, so if you're interested, please uh, stop by one of our meetings. And I want to highlight, quickly highlight the current project. One of the long-term projects that we have been working on is the Kubernetes Hardening Guide. And I want to give a shout out to Rory McQueen and um, Kaylin Edwards for reviving this uh, specific issue because it's been open for about one, one and a half years. They revived it. They divided the topic into 
divided the issue into multiple topics so that the contributors can pick it up and not feel overwhelmed. And we already have our first topic that is merged, and that is authentication mechanisms. And we have another contributor who is working on um, RBAC. And there is a PR up. Um, it's up for review. So if you're interested, you can um, check it out. Um, and we are also looking for contributors on this um, particular issue. And the issue is hyperlinked. The slide's going to be available. It's already available on the sketch. So if you click on it and if you like any topic, please feel free to just express interest in. Um, I want to mention that if you express interest, this, that doesn't mean that you have to work on it alone by yourself. That means that we can find more collaborators and contributors and come together as a group and we can work on it together. Um, and moving on, um, so we do have some upcoming plans. And I know that makes Allah happy because I have future issues that's been listed forever. And one of the things is that our back guide, and I really want to have a good tutorial for Kubernetes our back and uh, add more concepts um, on that particular topic. And we already have a security checklist available for the administrators, and we would like to create one more that is focused towards application development. And if any of this topic is very interesting to you and you want to like participate, please um, stop by our meeting. It's uh, monthly on Thursdays at 2 p.m. Eastern. And we are also a sub-project that uh, collaborates asynchronously. So stop by the Slack channel. Um, Start a thread if you are interested in any topic. And if you really uh, want to improve anything on Kubernetes security on the website, feel free to create an issue. Give a shout out in the channel, and someone will actually uh, partner with you and help you champion that effort. Um, that's it for me. So next up, uh, I present to you Ray Lahano, uh, who is going to present uh, about the audit. Hello, folks. My name is Ray Lahano. Uh, professionally, I work with SUSE, but I like to contribute to Kubernetes. Uh, so I lead the external audit subproject. A little bit of history, it actually started as a working group, which actually published the first audit. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, like uh, the other subprojects and SIG security in general, our goal is to make Kubernetes more secure. But with the external subprojects, we do that by coordinating uh, regular security audits. Uh, and some of the tasks we do, we help to find the scope. We don't. We like the community to help as well. We want community input to help to find the scope. Uh, we release the RFP. Publishing the the RFP is also community driven as well. So we're open f uh, to, to for reviews. Uh, we also then we review vendor submissions and we coordinate with the CNCF, the Linux Foundation, and the Kubernetes Security uh, Release Committee as well. Uh, so that's us in general. Uh, a little bit of history, uh, the, uh, the 2019 security audit um, sorry, was the first security audit, and that was uh, published in 2019. And that was done by a uh, joint effort by Trail of Bits and Atreides. Uh, that was based on Kubernetes 1.13.4, and we're on 1.28, so Kubernetes moves fast. Uh, last year, uh, with efforts, with help with a number of SIG security contributors, we actually released a blog post that was a bit of a retrospective, like what happened since that 2019 security audit, where we're at, what have we done, and what do we need to do? It turns out we actually need to do uh, several, some, some stuff still. Out of that 2019 security audit, there were 37 uh, findings that were uh, found, issues were created. Uh, 21 are fixed, and five are deemed uh, that needs a Kubernetes enhancement proposal. That means that it's more than just a, a bug fix or a patch, that there's actually a, a change to the, and changes to the features of Kubernetes. So this also identifies that we also need help. If you are interested in, in contributing to Kubernetes and to uh, SIG security, uh, we have lots of issues <laughs> that needs help solving. So out of the 2019 uh, security audit, we have 21 that still needs to be fixed. As of April 19th of this, of this year, we published the latest security audit based on 1.24. And, and that was conducted by NCC Group. Um, out of that a security audit, uh, it was based on 1.24. The scope was the main components of Kubernetes, the API server, the scheduler, 
uh, various control uh, controllers, uh, the use of etcd, the kubelets, also a uh, secret store CSI driver. Uh, there are many components of Kubernetes, so we are, there is a gap, and I'll address this later on as well, that we want to audit uh, more components of Kubernetes as well. Um, sorry, I think my images are not showing up <laughs> for some reason. Uh, okay. So uh, we have an umbrella issue open uh, uh, for those 19 findings for that was uh, released in this past April. Uh, link is on the is on the deck as well. Uh, so there's 19 findings. I'll go over some of the some of the more key ones in, in, in a little bit here. So just a high level breakdown of the audits. Uh, you know, there's uh, I do want to focus that there's no critical and there's no high uh, findings that were found. Uh, so we're going to focus on the medium findings for the first parts of this talk. If, depending on time, we'll go into uh, to more of the findings here. Uh, based on the category, uh, there's access control, um, authentication, uh, identifying users, configuration, security configuration, cryptography, data validation. Um, and also the findings that were discovered out of the components that were part of the scope, only uh, findings were found in Kube API server, which is also a big component of Kubernetes, uh, and two in Kubelets, and four are from the architecture review. So like I said before, that we're gonna focus on the six issues first. Out of those, uh, four, is from the, four is from the Kube API server, one's with Kubelet, and one's uh, from the architecture review. So the first one is additive access control. This is one we all know. It's actually stated in the Kubernetes documentation that authorization in Kubernetes is mostly handled by RBAC. I guess there's some folks that use ABAC. Uh, and permissions are purely additive, and there are no deny rules. We state this in the documentation, there's no deny rules. So this was also, this, this was cited as well. And the, and the recommendation is to enhance RBAC to support uh, explicit deny rules. Uh, next finding is that um, under very specific conditions, and I have the conditions listed, listed here, uh, a, an authenticated user can have their privileges escalated to cluster admin. And so those conditions are when the client CA file equals to the request header client CA file and request header allowed names is, uh, is not used is to specify the, the, certifi the certificate common name uh, that's permitted for that request uh, header off. Uh, so the recommendation is to, uh, to to reject any conditions when that specific condition <laughs> is actually is actually valid. So this title uh, common certificate authority possible for client C and request header CA. So this is with the, the Cube API server. Uh, the third medium uh, finding was is actually fisk fixed, and this is about path traversal and namespace uh, namespace specifier. So a user, when they, uh, when they do a request, they could actually use uh, directory traversal sequence dot dot as a namespace in their request to the, the Kubernetes API. Uh, so you could find the full path of objects uh, that they should not be access, uh, they should not have access to. And so the recommendation which was taken was to add a check on the namespace identifier and API request. Oops. Uh, next one is the redirection of API server traffic to kubelets. So there's a feature in uh, the Kubernetes API servers that has a proxy feature, and we're gonna have two findings about this proxy feature. Uh, so uh, the first one is that when a user can actually get cluster admin uh, permissions, if they have specific um, permissions or already if they have get on no proxy, or they can either patch or uh, on node status and also, or also create on node permissions. Um, so they can manipulate the API server uh, to authenticate uh, itself as the API, as the API server. Uh, so the, this cube, the Kubernetes API server proxy is a feature in case the user does not have any network access to the workload or to the node. So you can actually proxy your request to the workload or to the node. Because of that, there are some findings uh, that, come, that came about with this, uh, the Kubernetes API server proxy feature. So the recommendation here is to implement additional defense measures to prevent uh, the proxy request uh, being sent to the API server swap port. So. Next one is API server proxy disables to TLS cert validation. 
this again is with the Kubernetes API with the proxy feature as well. And uh, the proxy, the server proxy or the Kubernetes API server sends TLS connection or uh, has TLS uh, connections to the pod services and nodes. Uh, and someone who can, can intercept those and can read or modify. Uh, so this recommendation here is to recommend uh, Im implement TLS cert validation for the pod service and node proxies. I think this might be the last one here. And this was not, um, this came about and was also published uh, by Aquasec and, and also was, it was referred to as uh, also from NCC as well. This is privilege escalation via node proxy permission. Uh, so I have the link for the blog from Aquasec as well. So a user uh, with certain permissions, this time it's get and create permissions on node proxy in the cluster uh, as and has full permission on the Kubelet API. Um, and also, and uh, this, so when this proxy request is made to the Kubelet or a node, the API server's own client cert is actually used to authenticate, uh, not the user. So you do get full access. I do want to make a note. Those are the six findings. Uh, there's more, and I'll, I'll reference those in a little bit. But I do want to make a note as well that we do have an audit roadmap since we know Kubernetes is very big. And we have the main components, but there are more than just the more, more than the main components. This is just a screenshot, a small bit of the, what was proposed as the audit roadmap. Uh, so things like uh, even worker nodes on running on Windows, um, cluster API, uh, gateway API. There's so many more uh, components of Kubernetes that, that should be audited. Uh, with that, this subproject's goal is to, to conduct regular audits as well. Uh, they may not, uh, so these regular audits, uh, since the core features are, are very big, we might highlight more of the, uh, the smaller components like the cluster autoscaler and several components together and do the main components at a specific cadence. Uh, this roadmap is on GitHub and is open for any pull requests as well. We want this to be community driven. Uh, not just the SIG, but everyone needs to think about security. Uh, so we, please, everyone uh, wants to, uh, who has an idea of any components of, in Kubernetes that should be audited, uh, please uh, make a pull request. And we have an issue already opened, uh, just open this, for the next audit. So this is just a tracking issue. Uh, so this is what uh, we've done in the last audit and a little bit more as well. Uh, so this is just to track an, an umbrella issue, just to track the activities that's required for the next security audit to take place. I do want to make a note, um, so you might be thinking that the first audit was 2019 and this last one was published in 2023. Um, so we did have a, a goal, but 2020, the pandemic happened and we released the RFP in 2021. Uh, and the audit was published in 2023. So one of the goals I, I hope to implement is have a faster release or ha have that process done a little bit faster. So that's a lot of coordination efforts. It's not, it's, uh, it's just a lot of, you know, if you don't know anything about security, um, if you don't know, if you don't code, that's totally fine. And we're open to anyone that could help with just coordination efforts. Uh, so with that, the issue is open and it's, uh, the link is on GitHub as well. Uh, so just going over, we help to find the audit scope. Like I said, that's community driven. We want community to help out. Creating the RFP, uh, we could help uh, create the base of the RFP, but we want the community also to have their input in. Um, after that, we get proposals in and vendor assessment. Then we go through the actual audit and uh, finding subject matter experts. Like I said, like I said you don't have to know Kubernetes. Uh, very intimately, we we all we had need to find is the subject matter expert behind those certain uh, behind those certain components that could be that could talk to the vendor for the audits. Uh, after a few more steps here, we do coordinate with the security release committee and also the Linux Foundation, uh, Linux Foundation and the CNCF as well. Then we publish the findings and we start over again. So this is an ongoing cycle. Even if you don't have time for now, you can always help out in the future and also help jump and jump in whenever you want to. So a little bit more as well, I'm just gonna go over to some of the more findings that we didn't highlight in the um, medium findings, some of the low ones. So there's, there's also uh, uh, on, the umbrella, on the umbrella issue as well, uh, there's status of a fix or it won't fix. So, 
Uh, this, the other one that we, another one too, that is a finding is a multiple concerns with network policy. This was deemed as won't fix, because this was as a result of uh, communication with contributors. This is because you need to implement a, a, a CNI plugin to implement the Kubernetes network model. And some CNI plugins don't enforce network policies. So this is not exactly. Um, so the, the print recommendation is if you want to use network policies, of course, use a CNI that uses network policies. Uh, next was the lack of cohesion between core access control mechanisms. Uh, that's because we, uh, in Kubernetes, we have RBAC to authorize and authenticate users, and we have admission control uh, for resources. Uh, so there's needs, there's not exactly, they don't really, they, yes, they do and they don't, but there's lack of, of cohesion between them. Uh, next one is the weaknesses and pod security standards in restricted profile. And uh, the restricted profile of pod security standards does not enforce group ID to be zero. All right, uh, so the next one in terms of the Cube API server, uh, just going over the low ones. As you can see, there are several that are, actually in the next slide we'll see that there are several low, uh, low risk issues that were fixed. Uh, as well as just going over some of these, the authentication source not shown in the audit logs. So you kind of manipulate uh, some things that it might be a security certain concern since the radio is low. Uh, I do like the MTDR volumes that I support mount options. Uh, so this is when uh, this is site is low and this is when MTDR you could run, you could execute um, uh, programs from MTDR and so there's there's no option to do a no exec on MTDR. So that was a recommendation for the MTDR volumes do not support mount options. Uh, last one is the loopback token usable externally. So this is the, uh, I think this is kubeadm init, the loopback token. Actually, I'm gonna come in, notes. sorry about that. Uh, the cube, uh, this is the, the API server creates a te an ephemeral loopback token at init, and this could be used to obtain system master's privileges. A few more low ones for a cube API um, that uh, the inaccurate exported uh, URI header. Uh, actually, let me go to log and incorrect bootstrap tokens while I try to recall the first one. Uh, so bootstrap tokens, uh, and this was fixed. If you, someone used incorrect bootstrap token, you could, um, and then it would log the actual value of that in the logs. Do a time check here. Uh, a few more that were uh, fixed recently is a non-constant time comparison of service accounts. So uh, the comparison of service accounts was not in constant time. So theoretically, you could kind of uh, sideways guess the value of the service account. So I uh, do want to leave some time for questions. So I'm actually going to uh, go into a last one here. Uh, the, pri the privilege es escalation uh, via nodes proxy permission that was was already reviewed in, as a medium fix, and we do need uh, help to fix that. So if you are interested in contributing to SIG security in a very impactful way, uh, that is one way to, uh, to help out. So I want to uh, save some room here, about six minutes for any questions. I've got two questions. Um, one is that you mentioned the Slack channels, but what is the, the workspace? It's a Kubernetes Slack workspace. Um, okay. yeah, and, and then there's a, the ha hashtag SIG security, SIG dash security, and our, the sub projects have uh, their own uh, Slack channels, uh, SIG dash security dash external audits, uh, SIG dash security dash uh, cl cluster, we like uh, tooling, SIG, you know, the security docs as well. Is Kubernetes, mm -hmm. right? Uh, what was that question? The the main workspace, like where? Yeah, where yeah, the you? main Kubernetes workspace. All right, so. cool. And um, second question is, um, when you say the audit, uh, what is your framework actually? What are you actually using to audit against? And yeah. To 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 be honest, with you, I'm I'm com I'm coming from security background, so my thinking is that what you're presenting is more of a like a uh, uh, code scan mm -hmm. rather than the full audit because there's more components to the audit than just this, the code yeah. that you need to have, including multiple controls, including like, you know, how you 
you know, what the access is, you know, how you maintain the code, where, you know, who has access to it, who can commit to it, and, and so forth. So that is kind of like, you know, if you can address that. Yeah, I do agree that most Thanks. of the. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> you're welcome. I do agree that uh, this audit was a lot of, of, of code scanning um, uh, that they did. We uh, also the CNCF audit did fuzzing as well from another vendor. Uh, that that the, is difficult to do an audit that's very comprehensive with a large size of a project, a project, and this is something that you know we're trying to address as well. So I, I do agree that we need to uh, expand the framework of, of the audit. So. Any questions? Hi, I'm short. If if people wanted to get involved in SIG security, is there any kind of like skill requirement or experience requirement to get involved? Like who can get involved in SIG security and how? That's an excellent question. Um, anyone, anyone who is enthusiastic about Kubernetes and security is welcome to join SIG security. Um, there is no specific skill set required. There is no specific knowledge required. Um, all that is required to participate in SIG security is that you are, you know, somehow involved in Kubernetes or you want to be and that you're interested in security. And we will embrace you and uh, help you connect to what uh, interests you to work on to make an impact um, in Kubernetes in respect of security. So yeah, come come on in. Join, join us. The, the water is warm. Any more questions? Oh, go ahead. It, hey, how's it going? So, if we uh, if we are contributing, uh, what is the level of effort? Uh, like an average, like how how many hours are we? Or is it just like based on whenever we have some time? So this is totally up to you as well. <laughs> I mean, like if you want to contribute, if you want to contribute uh, five minutes, ten minutes a week, you know, to maybe do uh, security docs reviews, that's okay. totally welcome. Or if you want to drive a, a cap forward that fixes one of the findings, that might take more time uh, in, in a week. That, then you're welcome for, to that too. Sure. So any amount of time is welcome. And do you guys have like weekly or biweekly? Yeah, we do uh, have biweekly meetings on Thursdays. Um, and you could even just join the meetings. So it's, if you wanted to join the meetings, that's a great way to be part of SIG security. Okay. How can we go about getting invited to that? So there is, uh, in the GitHub, there's uh, the Kubernetes repo. There's community slash, in, in, the, in the community repo, there's all the SIGs. And you just click on SIG security, and we have uh, our, the, uh, the link to the Zoom, when the Zoom is, is at, uh, or the Zoom link, and also link to the agenda as well. Okay, thank you. Uh, we will probably edit the slides and upload it, yeah. and with that information, so if you go in about like, now, by the end of the day, yeah. uh, just to give us some room, uh, we will have all the information there. I think that, that just to editorialize on that a tiny bit, one thing I think uh, that you've really been amazing at in Docs is breaking down the tasks um, and the, like the increments of work that people can do to take on to rapidly um, contribute. Yeah. You know, it's not, it's like, oh, we literally do have five to 10 minute tasks that you can take on and make an impact yeah. in SIG security. So um, that's definitely something that I take inspiration from um, as you. well. So uh, Savitha and uh, what is it, Ian and Kaylin, um, uh, or Rory, Rory rather, yeah. have been really great at. Yeah. So that's that's part of what we try to do to make security welcoming and digestible for people is to say, hey, like you, here, here's a five minute thing that you can go and do and, yeah. and make an impact. And you can triage issues. That's another thing. Or you can just come to the meeting and take notes. We appreciate people who take notes, and we really need note takers. Uh, it's hard to run the meetings and take notes as well. I struggle a lot. I cannot type and talk. I make typos. I'm very cautious about it, so one of the help, about the ways to contribute is to show up the meeting um, and to like take notes that help us or create a Slack thread 
stuff like that. Like we have many uh, ways to contribute. You don't have to know security. And the, this is like, if, if you know, it's amazing. And we also encourage that if you are, please come to our SIG with the mentality of learning and sharing. We really need that and we really encourage that. So I think we're just about literally to, okay, so yeah. we're now officially I, out of time, but I do just quickly want to shout out our amazing chairs who are sitting right here, Ian and Tabitha. Um, they have done such an amazing job in creating security community and having us subproject leads um, connect to what makes us Plus one excited. That. So thank yeah. you.